condensed version of it, but this is the deeper playthrough that, that Dan was talking about. But one of the things I love about this is the fact that it's located underwater. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider has full 360 degree movement. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, you, you kind of paddled around the surface and fans said, bring back swimming. We want to go underwater. That's a hallmark of the franchise. And we said, all right, be careful what you wish for because we're going to give you <laughs> underwater survival. You've got moray eels, you've got piranhas, you have to manage your oxygen. It's all very fast paced. It's not meant to be a clunky, you know, slow exploration. But the idea is that Lara is going into these unfamiliar territories. You have to make your way through very, very narrow crevasses, like down dark tunnels. You don't know what's waiting for you. You don't know if there's a, a treasure there, a challenge tomb, or you're just going to run out of oxygen. So we add that element of exploration. And in this case, if you have upgraded Lara's breath enough, she can make it all the way to this challenge tomb. Without that skill upgrade, you'd never be able to hold your breath long enough to and that's find the, this challenge tomb. And and she's that's got fun. a sweet outfit, too. That's funny <laughs> enough because <laughs> for the underwater thing is that because people were not used to do that when they start playing Shadow Tomb Raider, so they went underwater and there were signs of challenge tomb, but they were all turning back because <laughs> they were afraid of missing you know, some accidents. So it was a very interesting uh, dynamic. Uh, and seeing that was for us was like, yes, we got it. People are afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Also, yeah. we, we can't talk about a shadow without the lighting aspect. And for us, building Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we said, okay, we need to invest in our lighting technology. So we pushed a lot to make sure that we can bring the most immersive um, environment as possible. So you can see how lighting is something that talks that through the screen and also underwater there's like everything is handcrafted to make sure that we have a very very immersive uh, environment yeah and andrea you mentioned the outfit uh, yeah, you like that it one of the things that is really actually quite important about this is that it is showing the culture of paititi accepting lara because at first much like the jungle paititi is pushing back against lara they don't recognize her as someone coming to try and help. They, they recognize her as a threat from the outside world. And eventually, through her actions and through her friendships with people and interacting with them in a meaningful, positive way, they begin to trust her and welcome her into the culture and give her you know, the garb that sort of allows her to move freely throughout there. And, and I think that that's, that's sort of like a, uh, an example of how we treat the world in general. You know, PyTT eventually will accept you if, if you're doing the right things and, and it recognizes you're trying to help. Uh, the jungle, when you first start, is a very dark and foreboding place. And then as you progress and as Lara becomes one with the jungle, as we say, it actually opens up. It becomes lighter because it is a, it is a symbol of the world saying, all right, Lara is fitting into it. It is becoming one with the jungle. Of course, that gives you a lot of great combat advantages, but it's also a measure of that respect that the world is, is kind of giving Lara. And from a narrative standpoint also, uh, what's important about PyTT is that it's also a, it's also a pivotal point for her as, a, as, a, as, as she's growing into her role. And this is a pivotal point. The, her relationship with that city will actually change her. And you'll feel that as you're going to play the game, that there's emotional evolution for her when she goes there because she's seeing how these people are living. They see how they're accepting her. Because the, the dress that she wears right now, it's an Incan dress. Uh, it's part of the rebel group. She's a uh, part of the rebel group helping uh, against uh, the cult of Cuckoo Ken, of course. We like to do a joke about that because there's um, <laughs> one of the video. The merchant is, is saying that. It's, it, it's funny for us because we've been hearing it 10,000 times. But that's what it is exactly. So she's going against uh, this cult cult, this tyrannical cult, and they, they helping each other, and that's what the thing about that is that the, her relationship with that, with, with this rebel, with these people, actually is transforming her, and helps her from when you play the game the first hour, and then you go in there, and you finish, you know, playing the, that part, especially the part that you're seeing, and, and later on, you see that she's actually growing emotionally and and that's very rewarding for those who really care and love lara you see that you see more a human side of her evolving it's very rewarding it, it is the gate to get to paititi this is uh one of the ideas that people uh from the community had say hey a lot of these cool tombs actually are challenged to me we would like to have you know tombs that are much more complex 
on the main path. And because we had the difficulty, adaptive difficulty in mind, we knew that we could do that. So actually this tomb is on the main path and it's protecting Paititi. It is hard, but it is cool. And it's epic because it's one of the few, you know, when you look at it, it's one of the few uh, tombs that we have that are open air. The open air uh, and it's the trial of the eagle. So there's multiple trials that Lara had to go through reach by TT. That's why it's not touched by modernity. It's protecting it. There's a trial of the jaguar, trial of the spider, and this is the trial of the eagle. Oh, and you guys put I spiders in the game? Why? <laughs> well, and th you know what? I think that one of the things that is that is most special about this. This is one of my favorite spots because it it combines several pillars that are so important to the franchise. So if you look at what we're showing here, it's yes, a tomb, but it also heavily focuses on traversal, heavily focuses on puzzle solving, interacting with the environment, as well as there are some traps in here. If you're not careful, some of the elements that you turn on can actually kill you. And I will say, uh, if you don't want a spoiler, anytime you see Lara take out her bow, close your eyes, and then just keep it closed for about a 10 count, and then you can open it back up. We won't think you're scared, because there's nothing scary in this tomb, but if you want to solve it by yourself, the bow is, is going to give you some spoilers if you watch. Yeah, one thing about the failing in trial, this is a good example because in the first place, um, that uh, map was built by a team we're working with, a great team we're working with, and uh, at some point we we're trying to get a, uh, a very good puzzle we couldn't do it, so how many times we throw that in the garbage, redo it, and at one point we said, okay, let's bring one of the the challenge to put it on uh, one of the puzzle and put it right on the, the path and it became uh, one benchmark for all of the other uh, puzzle we made for the game. So I can say the first version of the puzzle was pretty lame. Uh, to just to be honest, uh, it was pretty lame. It always, it, you know, video games are very hard, you know, and you, you, you test a lot of things and, and uh, like Mario was saying, it was a team that was building one of the benchmark, what would be like a challenge tomb things, and we were like, wow, man, let's get that and put it there, and, and it felt right at home with the wind and e eagle, so it actually felt right at home, and, and now people actually love that because it's a great gate. I love that you like indirectly insulted the first guy that worked on this. You're like, it's pretty lame. Some, there's one person right now crying watching this stream. So good, good job, Dan. I think, I think no, that this I, is also I, a great, a I great do lame example. lame stuff all the time. Yeah. yeah, I think this is also a great example of if you turned off the white markings, just imagine trying to navigate this space without knowing what you could interact with. That to me is where all you, all you guys who said, you know, what is, I think it's like turn off white paint is the, uh, the group that Dan was talking about earlier. Everyone in that group, this is where you're gonna say, hmm, maybe just here, <laughs> we, we turn it on. Just for this one tomb, and then I'll, and then I'll turn it back off, I promise. Exactly. No, no, always leave it on, just leave it on. Yes, but I, I this, again, this is one of my favorite spaces just because it, it shows Lara doing what Lara does best, being a brilliant archaeologist. And it's, you know, there's, there's no combat in here, so you can just take your time. You can figure out how does the world work. You know, we always try and make sure that we have very physics-based puzzles, making the world interact and react in a very believable manner. To Dan's earlier point, making it feel like, you know, the, the civilization could actually build this using the technology and the means that they had at their disposal. So this for me is just just such a great example of, of what makes Shadow of the Tomb Raider special because you've got you've got an open air tomb, you've got all this puzzle solving, you've got the culture clearly, you know, shining through here. So I, I just love this. Whoever did this demo makes it look so easy. It was not this easy when I tried it. <laughs> Do you know, believe it or not, when we are making these captures, so I will say a little, little insider info for you guys because you were kind enough to join the panel. 
we probably go through about 20 to 25 captures before we will actually put it up on screen because we will sit there and to do a run through like this where you don't mess up like oh that was so perfect except Lara's leg just clipped through that rock right there sorry <laughs> <laughs> go back and re-record this 20 minute segment and, oh, then, no. and then we make somebody else cry that's that's how I make people cry Dan Dan makes them cry by saying your work was crap <laughs> But most of the thing I say it's crap, it's because me, I directed it too. Eh? You know, it's like the tune before this one, I directed it, and it was crap. But <laughs> that was you in the mirror talking to yourself. Your work is crap. You Make that puzzle not lame. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, 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 the real challenge um, to build puzzle like... What is that? 